Hi and welcome to this week's Wu Wai Wisdom Life Lessons Teaching. It's great to be back with you all. This week we are talking all about trusting your gut and the power of your intuition. You'll discover how to recognize and connect to that deep intuitive wisdom within you and how to use it as a force for good in your life. Okay, David, so let's go back to basics. In the Wu Wei Wisdom model, what is this gut feeling or intuition? Actually, Alex, it's very important because most of our videos talk about you are the creator of your emotions, your feelings, and to distinguish now, we're perhaps discussing that a feeling can be something you should recognize. So this is going to be a very interesting teaching. Let me start off at the beginning. The big difference is when we're talking about red light emotions, when we're talking about the inner child, this is a teaching right from China, and I love this teaching so much. So when we're talking about the inner child, the inner child talks at you. It's almost like it's coming outside to you, externally to you. It criticizes you. It compares you. It judges you. It tells you. Sometimes we call it the 3 a.m. mind. When have you woke, ever woken up at 3 a.m. In, in the morning and you've had a voice giving you encouragement? It always does the opposite. And so that's the inner child, where what we're calling Shen or the sage, and we'll, I'll talk about this later, comes from within you out. So the inner child talks at you. This good feeling, this Shen or the sage, talks from you. So it's almost coming right down in below your navel, in what I call being a Taoist, the lower Dantian, and it talks from you. It's almost like that inner knowing, as people would say, or as you said in the introduction, a gut feeling, an inner knowledge, a deeper grounding sense of you know when this is right, this voice that comes from within. And I suppose to do this contrast of the voices, how do we know the difference? Um, the ego, uh, which we often refer to as the inner child, it can be like a fearful inner child screaming and nagging at us and crying, or it can be ve the very kind of harsh, critical parent, whereas the voice of the Shen, our intuition, our higher self, our gut feeling, uh, that narrative is more steady, more calm. It might be um, kind of quite uh, a strong feeling if it's if we're encountering uh, a, a, like a dangerous or a very concerning or very serious situation. But there's still a sense of calmness of steadiness with, with, I guess, the feeling or the narrative we get. Yes, and that's why sometimes it's hard to find it, you know, Alex, because the inner child is so intrusive, it's so loud, it's so overpowering, overwhelming, a lot of my clients would call it, this voice, this narrative, connecting to negative feelings of fear, anxiety, being scared, so powerful that you it's hard to connect and to listen to that still quiet voice we did a teaching a couple of teachings ago about being humble and we couldn't quite get onto the shen and the shen will not come out and fight the inner child will not try and be top dog will not try and quiet me down the shen doesn't do that the shen just waits there waits for you to come to it it never changes. It can't be taken away from you. It can't be diminished. But it's always there. And we have to go and find it. This is the big difference. Where the inner child finds us. <laughs> yeah, it's right in our, right face. in our yeah. faces. We have to go and find this, whatever you want to call it. And it's, when you were giving your demonstration, I thought it was very 
interesting how we've got so many words for something higher power good feeling inner knowing high you know we've got all these words so i think every human being knows that inner voice mm -hmm. but we find it very hard to keep connected to it and and the difference is i think david all the teachings we do on the inner child and um the inner child's narrative and desires and fears our teachings encourage our supporters to recognize those for what they are and we're saying recognize your gut feeling in, in your intuition as well but the big difference is we this teaching is about allowing your intuition your share and your higher self to guide you in some life choices Whereas we're saying, by all means, definitely recognize the inner child's voice because you want to have a conversation and you want to address its concerns and you want to reparent the inner child. But don't be led by the inner child voice. Whereas we're saying, yes, be, be led, allow your inner wisdom to guide you and help you navigate through life's twists and turns. I think an interesting word or concept to think about on what you just said there is the trans is a translation from the Chinese and I translated in in my definitions as being grounded. That to me is is the key. Are you grounded in your inner child, jumping around, shouting, screaming, and connecting to your emotions, your fear, your anxiety, uh, wanting to be future-proofed, wanting to be perfect? All the stuff that we talk about, very important, because a lot of the people, a lot of our clients are grounded in that. And this teaching is so important because you, I would want to advise you, to show you, to teach you how to be grounded in this Shen and how to recognize this humility, this quietness. But in that being humble is not a doormat. It's not a weakness. It, it actually is your strength. When you're grounded in that, you're more likely to be in your flow you're more likely to make better decisions because being grounded in your Shen, the number one thing it does, it gives you a wider perspective. The inner child sees things very narrow, black, white, yes, no, good, bad. They shouldn't do this. I should do that. I should be number one. I should be better than them. Where the Shen is a lot more calmer and it allows you to step back and a lot of the times when I'm working with a client, I will say something. I say it on these, these teachings. It's a very simple technique. Drop your shoulders. Take a breath. Imagine a center line going right through your body like a core of an apple. And just breathe down through that center line. And whether you're walking or sitting or lying, just now, as you do this now, just breathe down through that center line and try and find a place below your navel, a quiet place. Again, the Taoist teaches my translation, in the center of a tornado, there's a, a quiet space. And just try and find that quiet space right now as we're talking. And ground yourself in that quiet space. And as you do that, you'll start to hear a quieter, but as you quite rightly said, a stronger, a, a more balanced voice talking to you. And this is what the Taoists call the sage, S-A-G-E, the sage, the wise one, the wise one within you. When I was living and working in, in China, in the Wudong Mountains, we had this opportunity once a week where we could go and speak and, and take lessons from the kind of the head monk, the master. And, and they would call him the sage. Are you seeing the sage? Are you speaking to the sage? Um, and it's that wisdom. But this teaching is we all have that inner wisdom. No one can give you that. No one can take that away from you. And that's when we're talking about your innate value and worth. Sees the same thing. And so connecting and grounding yourself in that and living your life in that inner wisdom of trusting yourself. The idea of, say, for instance, you're not good enough. 
would be ridiculous if you're still connected to that sage. Try and think of you're not good enough when you're connected to the sage. It's almost laughable. The idea that you couldn't cope when the evidence is you've coped all your life. And then the third lie, do it now. Breathe down. Just listen to that voice and relax and give yourself the idea that you're unlovable or you're unworthy. It really doesn't make sense. And that really is why this intuition, this inner knowledge, whatever you want to call it, is so important to practice. And I really would say, as I do recommend on the teachings, just 10 minutes a day. Meditation is about focusing your mind, not allowing the inner child to lead your mind around on a merry-go-round, the carousel of despair, take you into the maze of confusion. When you connect to your Shen, the voice of the sage is not confusing. It doesn't take you round and around. It doesn't say, well, you could do this and you could do that. It's very strong, very... Base. It's like basing yourself rather than on shifting sand. It's like basing yourself on a firm foundation of rock, of your spirituality, of who you really are. And David, I think, you know, um, we can use guided meditations to help quieten our mind, to get us into that place where we can connect to this inner voice, the Shen. And um, we have a whole guided meditation playlist free on our YouTube channel, which I'll put a link to mm -hmm. in the show notes. And also on our website, we have um, meditations that you can buy and download. So please do check them out. But of course, you can just go out for a walk in nature. Yeah. Being in nature is a very grounding experience. It helps get you out of your head in order that you can kind of connect within or reading, mm. I, I like to just open the I Ching and read a passage from the I Ching mm -hmm. because the words of the I Ching I find very soothing and stimulating and that calms my inner child mind down and connects me, allows me to connect more to my Shen. So there's various practices, there's not one way of doing this. The key is, it's not so much about how do I connect to the Shen? It's almost how do I how do I calm my ego, my inner child thinking down, my racing mind, and because a lot of people have this, I guess it's a dilemma. How do I know whether, you know, it's just my feelings, the the kind of a red light, uncomfortable red warning light feelings I'm getting, uh, which you know we can label as anxiety or overthinking. How do I know that it's yeah, the difference between, say, anxiety and uh, a strong, intuitive gut feeling from my share? Yes, I, I think you've made some really good points there. The, the, the One of the points you made was about nature, and I agree with you 100%. Just being out in nature, whatever that is, just walking in the park, walking by a beach, uh, the Taoists say we are part of nature. We're not apart from it. And so that's a really good point. Your point about the I Ching or the Tao Te Ching, which are two really fundamental books of Taoism, reading a verse of the Tao Te Ching and listening to the commentary and what it means and putting your own meaning on it is very important because it connects to that inner stillness. And then the point you made about the red lights, that's why we call them red lights. If you're experiencing red light feelings, anxiety, fear, scared, overwhelm, this is not the sage. This is not the sage. And this is where a lot of my clients get confused because they think the, the, the Shen and the sage and the inner voice should come up and fight the, the inner child and overpower it and it will never do that it will never enter into a fight in fact it goes even quieter so it's our job to quieten as you said and to deal with the inner child and that allows the shen to come forward and then we start to recognize and that's the most important thing we start to recognize the difference between the two and i use the term some people like some people don't like stop it 
Stop it. So when the inner child and the red light feelings become so overpowered, stop it as quick as you can. Just step back and say, no, I am not being connected to that. And when you do that, it allows this inner strength, this inner knowledge to come forward. And again, I'm going to repeat what I said at the beginning, because I think this is such a pivotal teaching. The inner child talks at you, criticizing, harshness, comparing, being judgmental, wanting to be perfect, doesn't want to fail, worrying about what other people think, wants to know the future. Here's another thing. The inner child dislikes the unknown. Shen loves the unknown. The I Ching actually means the book of changes. The Shen wants to take you into the unknown. It sees the unknown as the greatest gift for us as human beings, to be able to explore the unknown, to be able to experience the unknown, to be able to flow in the unknown. And if you think about it, would you really like to know the future? And a lot of my clients laugh and say, yes, I would. Really? Would you really want to know what's going to happen next week, the week after? It's all laid out for you, the day you're going to die, when you're going to be ill, when things are going to go right and when things are going to go wrong. If you knew the future, you couldn't change the future. You're like a robot. You're just following a path. It's predetermined. Now the Shen sees that totally different. It sees life as an adventure. It sees life as opportunities. We've done some teachings on abundance. It sees the unknown as abundance. So many opportunities that you can explore. And you can, get a, you can make a mistake and you learn and you grow. And this is the unknown. And this is the voice of the sage. And connecting to those two voices and understanding those two voices, as you said in the introductory, is life-changing. Absolutely life-changing. But nobody can give you this because you already have it. All you have to do is practice. And I'm only talking about 10 minutes a day. You can do it in bed on the morning. You don't have to go through a, a special process. It's just being aware, being in control. This is your life. This is your mind. I want you in control of it. Wonderful. Thank you, David. And like I say, I will put a link in the show notes to our guided meditation playlist and also a link to our Shen video playlist. There's plenty more teachings on there to help you understand and connect to that wise, authentic, spiritual part within you. I really, really hope you have enjoyed this teaching. Please do let us know and perhaps share it with someone else who you think it may also benefit. David works every week with clients all over the world on exactly these sorts of issues. If you're interested in learning more about David's one-to-one consultations, I will put a link in the show notes as well. And finally, please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We produce new teachings every week, and we would love to share your journey with you. Bye-bye.